right, it's been a minute. Uh, I'm not going to take long, but I want to talk to you about something that I think is immensely important. Uh, I talk a lot about uh, building strong black men. I talk a lot about the importance of having strong black men in the community, the importance of restoring the black family, the importance of black men knowing their roles. There's something I want to talk on that I see a lot of that really just frustrates the hell out of me. A lot of times when I get to talking about strong black men, about black men being providers, techers, coverings, and, and, and all of that, a word that pops up a lot from male, black males who uh, have adopted a weaker stance and a lower standard is simp. Anytime you tend to in any way seem or appear to be catering or addressing the needs of our women, there seems to be this word that flies around. It doesn't bother me because I know who I am and what I've, what I've done and what I do. And so it doesn't bother me. Um, I know what it takes to heal a home, to, to uh, sustain a home, to heal a community, to sustain a community, and to heal a race and sustain a race. And that's my goal, that's my work. But I'm gonna tell you something that I do think is simpish and weak. You wanna talk about being a simp. There's this need because we are competing with one another as black men, I'm talking black men specifically, we are competing with other with one another with black men. We tend to look for opportunities to uh, elevate ourselves and our thinking and our mind and in our positions by comparing ourselves to someone who may not be doing better, even to that person's detriment or maybe the dis uh, destruction of their families. What I'm talking about here is there is a growing push of black men who see other black men struggling to take care of their families and they use that as a means of elevating themselves by attacking the fact that the brother is struggling or that the brother is trying to get it together that the brother is fighting to hold his family together to provide for his family something that is if you're a real man not being able to fully provide for your family is a problem for you it hurts you. It eats at you. It will destroy you if you don't, if you're not careful and you don't understand things. And while a man is going through that, there are men who are taking that opportunity to further tear him down. And more importantly, they will use it as an opportunity to dig into and get close to his mate or his wife. That's a simp. That's very weak. That is not how you build the black community. We are that torn up that we need to attack a brother. When he's down, let me tell you something. Um, no matter if it's where I am today or at times when uh, things were way better, uh, not that things are horrible or bad now financially, but when things were way better, when money wasn't even an option, I helped so many black men uh, hold their homes together during trying times for them. And in many instances, these men came to, came to me not because I knew them or they sought me out, but I knew their wives. And their wives would come to me and say, hey, man, you know, we're going through this. He's got too much pride. He won't reach out and ask for help. But we, we you know, and I said, hey, give me his number. I'm going to talk to him. If he won't come to me, I'm going to go to him. And I would go to him. And we would talk about it. And I would tell him, the one thing I wouldn't do is make him feel bad because he was in that place. I would tell him, hey, we all find ourselves in places where we are not doing the things that we feel we should be doing as men. Uh, the thing is, you got to have men in your corner that you can call on when it gets that way. Uh, don't have so much pride that you can't ask for help. And then I would sit up and say, what is it that you need? And sometimes it was simply money. Sometimes it was an opportunity. Uh, they were without a job. Sometimes, it was, whatever it was, I would reach out and I would offer help. And even in the instances where I looked at the guy and knew he wasn't doing everything he could, I never made that clear to his wife. I never put him on blast in front of his wife. It was always, hey, man, look, I'm going to hold you accountable. Here's my number. I'm going to call you. I'm going to keep up with you. You got to do better in this area. You got to do better in that area. And I'm not talking about the Rick Wallace you see in front of you. I'm talking about this person that I'm talking about now was 20 and 25 years ago that I was doing this. 
I, I was reared in the house with my great grandfather, and I watched my great grandfather and the men they hung that, that he hung around, and how they walked with one another, how they supported one another, how they kept one another. And, and, and if a brother went through, the other brothers got together and went to him, and they looked out for him. They didn't use it as a chance to say, "Look, I'm better than he is. Look, I'm doing better than he is." Or, or see, hey man, this might be a chance to shoot at his wife. And that weak ass stuff that I see happening now is trash. And it's weak. Black women, stop falling for that. Number one is you should never be discussing what's going on in your marriage or in your home with another man. I don't care who it is, unless it's your dad. You shouldn't be discussing it with another man, period. You should be sitting down and trying to find out. I'm not saying stay with somebody that's not going to handle their business. What I'm saying is if you're going to be in the home with the person, you shouldn't be discussing them with anyone else black men if you are in a situation where you can help a person and they come to you and it's the wife you should be talking to the man I don't care if you don't know him and you know her you should be talking to the man because the man is the doorway of the solutions of the problems and if you start solving her problems without him she's going to turn away from him and she's going to automatically turn to you some of you are doing that for that very reason that's trifling the way you want to do it is lift brothers up. So if a woman comes to you and sits up and says, hey, look, you know, man, we're going through, I don't know what to do. He's he's trying or he's not trying. What I don't know what it is. Let me talk to him. Let me talk to him. And then you talk to him. Whatever help you can offer, you help. Whatever information you can give him, whatever encouragement, whatever advice you can give him, whatever wisdom you can give him, you give it to him. You never tie him down in front of his wife. You never try to make him look small in front of his wife. But women, you got to stop going. You don't talk to men about what goes on in your marriage. You shouldn't be talking to too many females about what's going on in your marriage. What's going on in your marriage is between you. And then if it gets to a point where it needs some outside, it needs to be a professional. It needs to be someone that does not have a bias in it, that can listen to both sides not with a non-biased perspective and call the truth the truth, regardless who it affects and how it affects. You're taking your perspective to someone else who doesn't have an interest in the other person and you're expecting them to give you a balanced account of what's going on in that. No, they're going to speak to your side. They're going to automatically assume the worst about the other person. They have no interest in them. They don't know them. They're not friends. What you have to do is sit up and understand that your responsibility is to your partner. Their responsibility is you. If it's not being met, if there's a problem, you go to someone who does not have an interest and you work that out, if it can be worked out. And if, it, if it's decided that it can't be, you make a clean break. Stop bringing other people into your situation. That's for the women. Men, ain't too many things more trifling than using. Now, I'm not talking about the dude that's beating on his woman. I'm not talking about the dude that's sitting around playing with his pubic hairs on the, on the couch watching TV, not working, while she's holding down three jobs and all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the guy. You know he's busting his ass. You know he's out there trying. You know he has a heart for his family. Get out of his mix. Either go help him or get the hell away from it. But stop jumping in. That's the one of the weakest things. You talk about caring about a woman and, and supporting the woman and, and, and talking about uh, protecting and providing for women is simpish. No, simpish is that weak bull crap of taking when a brother is down and using it as a way to position yourself or at the very least make it. No, he's doing what? He can't do that. Look what I'm doing. I'm over here doing this for my family. I'm over. He's doing that. There's not a brother that can come to me that I can see and say, hey, man, he's out here. He's out here trying and he can come to me and I'm going to sit around and down him in front of his wife. I, I a, a week ago, I had brothers come in and sit out in front of me and chopping it up with them and telling them things that they can do to improve their position. We have to stop competing with one another. We've been competing with other one another for so long that we take every opportunity to try to prove we're better. I'm not in a competition with not one black man. I'm not trying to be better than not one other black man. I'm just trying to be better than the man that went to sleep last night and woke up this morning. 
when I go to bed tonight, I want to be better than the person that woke up this morning. That's the only man I'm competing against, myself. But I'm sitting up here and I'm watching this happen over and over again. It's becoming way too common. And women, you've become way too comfortable talking to other men about your marriage. Stop it. Again, I'm not saying if you're in something that you don't feel is what you need it to be, that you have to sit there and be in something that isn't working. But in that case, remove yourself. Don't go putting that person and exposing that person to something based off of where you're at and what you're feeling and what you're thinking. Because you're telling the story from your perspective. Your emotions are involved. Uh, a bunch of other things are involved. And facts can be interpreted in multiple different ways. If you, You're not telling the facts. You're telling your interpretation of the facts. That's not how you work on your marriage. That's not how you strengthen your marriage. That's not how things happen. How things happen is you hold down. See, people talk to me a lot. And they ask me a bunch of things about parenting, about marriage, about a bunch of things. And I tell them, none of that uh, is absolute. None of it is guaranteed. Uh, I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not a perfect husband. Uh, I don't have a perfect marriage. What I have is an unyielding commitment to honor my vows. And what that means is I don't treat my wife based on how I feel at any given moment. I treat her, I treat her based on the commitment and the covenant and the contract I made with her between her and, and, and me and God. It is about honoring that contract even when things don't necessarily seem the way they should be. Because that's going to happen. It's going to happen. So if I'm acting on feelings when things aren't going my way, I'm, it's going to be reflected in the way I treat her. It's going to be reflected in how I handle my business. It's going to be reflected in how uh, committed I am to working it out. That's why you have so many divorces, because people are not honoring covenants uh, and people are not committed to working through things and making it work. Number one is, to me, my, my marriage is about building. Ain't nothing easy about building. So there are some real tough times in, in, in the growth processes that you have to get through when you're building. You know, existing is a whole different thing. Existing when it's good is good, when it's bad is bad. No, but when you're building, you're trying to go somewhere. And if you're trying to go somewhere, you're not staying where it's comfortable. So you you might get comfortable for a minute, but you're not staying there. Why? Because you're building. So you're going to the next level, and the building requires energy, effort. You're going to have frustration. You're going to have disappointment because something is going to be looking like, man, we're about to get here, and then boom, uh, a deal doesn't go through. Boom. Uh, 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 you know, you have a setback in your investments. Boom. You know, business slows down. Whatever it is, it happens. And then so if, if, if you're sitting up and you're acting on your feelings, it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. I act in my marriage based on my commitment. Does it mean that anything is absolute? I've learned in this life that there's no such thing as absolute. But what I can say is I carry myself in my marriage based off of my commitment. I give it, I give everything I have. Maybe it's good enough, maybe it's not, but it'll never be I just sit there and exist it. And I can live with that. I can live with saying, hey, I gave my best. And, and if someday I find out my best isn't good enough, I can live with that if I gave everything I had. But what am I getting? I'm getting at this. We have to start understanding that if we're going to ever build a black community, it begins with a black family. And the black family begins with the black marriage. And the black marriage has to be respected. The more marriage is spurned, the more you start to see moral decline and ethical decline and so much more. It's not about how you feel. It's about a com it, 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 it's about covenant. It's about commitment. It's about being clear of what you plan on doing. And if you're not ready to make a commitment, don't make it. But again, back to my original point. Black men, stop shooting down black men in front of or around or through their mates. If they're struggling, go help them or just back the hell off. Black women, stop discussing your mates with other men. That's all I have to say right now. Um, it's gotten worse in like the last 10 years. In the last four years, it's become horrible. 
It's, it's like nothing's off limits to us. We have no code, you know, and th that's unacceptable from where I'm sitting. You know, there's a lot of people who will take exception to that. So I really don't care because I'm not here to uh, make people happy. I'm not here to be liked. I'm not here for none of that. I'm here to share the truth. I'm here to bring wisdom, to bring knowledge, to bring clarity, and hopefully inspire some people to do something that's right, something that's powerful, something that's real. And sometimes it doesn't come across easy. Everybody wants to do what's good for them and what feels good. This whole feel good shit has got us in a in in a in a unbelievable. Horrible, unbelievably horrible position because we're doing what feels good, but what feel good, what feels good isn't right. It's not working for us. It's destroying us. It's tearing us down. It's fun, but it, it doesn't have any longevity. It doesn't have any promise. And we consistently do it, and we consistently think that that's what's going to make things better, but it doesn't because this isn't about a feeling. This is about hardcore commitment to doing something that lasts, something that wins. And those are the marriages that are going to make it, the ones that are willing to go through it and build, the ones that are willing to fight through the difficulty, the ones that are willing to get through the tough times. They're, go they're going to come. If you're building, they're definitely going to come. On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, but I just had to say that. That was on my mind. Take it with a grain of salt, however you want to take it. I meant every word I said. And on that note, I'm out of here.